Good morning, folks. We've been watching the growth and development of a big sunspot group. It flared yesterday in low M range, but surging only the local umbral fields and not producing much ejecta, if any. The eruption caused a short and low-level radio blackout. Let's analyze that spot and one coming in behind it. The big grouping actually now has lost its delta class, but it still has a good deal of potential at the central mixing location. Behind that, we see a bit of stagnation in growth, only a minimal mixing extent to the group as well. After yesterday evening's sustained negative solar wind stream, the speed and plasma temperature began rising. Perhaps it was all part of a slow onset coronal hole stream, another one, and the geomagnetic storm conditions persisted much of the night. The negative coronal hole is departing the disk, still very blocked by coronal fields, meanwhile the positive northern opening slides right in. To answer questions about the earthquake watch, it peaks when this coronal hole faces Earth, as Venus and Mercury will be lining up then as well. Additionally, while our solar wind streams are from the negative coronal hole, the near-Earth influence from the incoming coronal hole is becoming positive. Remember, those are separate issues. There are two gamma ray bursts to report so far in 2015. Vela punched one out on the third, then Hercules did so yesterday evening. Top article today is about a new galaxy formation simulation that manages to be far more reflective of reality, as a model, than anything we've yet seen. At suspiciousobservers.org, we've often spoken of the galactic wind acting like the solar wind but for the whole galaxy, and it appears their focus on that single point is what has allowed their models to flourish. Remember three days ago, we saw the ice extent at 6.9 in the Great Lakes, said we'd need to update it soon. As the cold front begins to move in, we've already jumped up to 8.3% ice coverage, and the cold is just beginning. The frigid air that the West has seen for days on end now moves east. Before seeing that, the convergence indeed made bad weather across the Gulf states as it shifted. The convergence has mostly moved offshore now, but coming in behind it is a double shot of the Arctic blast. It is happy to steal the moisture off that Pacific flow as well, sending it down to snow over a huge portion of the country. This is the last 24 hours. And unfortunately, the heat in the southeast is short-lived as Florida even has a frost warning for tomorrow. It's about to get worse this week. Tiny sliver of the northern island nations crested by one flow while the larger convergence is to the east, far inland. The weather watches tonight are for that tiny sliver of the northern islands and that convergence area far inland. Precipitable water overlay shows how much moisture remains in the northern part of Australia, tailing down to a noticeable convergence between there and New Zealand. Thunderstorm warnings are worst at the north and trail down to that convergence. Don't forget the Mobile Observatory will be in Tucson tomorrow, Phoenix on the 11th. Check out observatoryproject.com for details. Got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time, 4.20 a.m. Mountain. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.